Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Our top story, in the midst of mounting pressure to testify at the APEC inquiry, Prime Minister Kretzer released the following statement to explain his role in the pepper spray incident. Before gods, when it come to ace pecker sprays like the student pre-testosterone, you got to remembering I did not know nothing. <laughs> now get out before I spray you with pepper. <laughs> Well, that clears it up for me. <laughs> Alberta Treasurer Stockwell Day says his province could one day have no personal income tax. Newfoundland already has that. It's called unemployment. <laughs> Finance Minister Paul Martin said one day Ottawa may also eliminate federal income tax. In the future, your paycheck will go straight to Revenue Canada. <laughs> Chicago hockey player J.P. Dumont was not unconscious during a game in Pittsburgh. When he came to, the bilingual Dumont had lost his entire grasp of the English language. Medical experts believe this is the same type of injury that happened to Don Cherry. <laughs> the Ku Klux Klan held a rally in the Big Apple. At first, New Yorkers paid no attention. When they saw a group of men wearing funny hats, they thought it was the Atlanta Braves trying to sneak out of town. <laughs> Radio shock jock Howard Stern and his wife are going their separate ways. Alison Stern admitted the split is her fault. She said she woke up one morning and realized she was married to Howard Stern! <laughs> With the government changing foreign ownership rules, the Onyx bid to merge Air Canada and Canadian Airlines faces increasing turbulence. Speaking before MPs Tuesday, Transport Minister David Colonnette conceded in the future Canada will only have one profitable air carrier. Lufthansa. <laughs> Faced with declining revenues, Canadian Airlines has taken action. Airfares will remain at current prices, but starting Monday, the cost of an in-flight drink will be $8,000. <laughs> and they ask passengers to please have the exact change. <laughs> Winnipeg has been hit with a wave of arson. Residents of the city are not concerned, saying, sure, it's arson, but it's a dry arson. <laughs> In France, the Citroën car company is introducing a brand new model inspired by Cubist artist Pablo Picasso. <laughs> the car has three headlights, a built-in left turn, and half a purple woman in the back seat. <laughs> a recent doctor's report says the use of cell phones may increase the risk of a brain tumor. As for people who use their cell phones while driving, doctors report there is no risk of a tumor because they are already brain dead. <laughs> In Iowa, thousands of birds suddenly dropped out of the sky dead. A similar occurrence happened in Canada. Thousands of birds flying over Saskatchewan dropped out of the sky after becoming bored to death. <laughs> Although singer Celine Dion is taking a year off to practice her lip-syncing techniques, her record company has just released a new CD that captures her unique sound. It's called Fingernails Sur La Chalkboard. <laughs> And now it's time to salute the headline of the day. Our target is, of course, that patriotic, rule-changing, true blue guardian of Canadian Airways, David F. Colonet. <laughs> Good cannon divorce. Our ammunition, rotten eggs. Sour grapes. <laughs> Shredded onyx chairs. Little plastic containers of semi-cooked chicken breast. Or lasagna, we're not sure what it is. Used barf bags. And to top it off, one minuscule package of peanuts. And when ready... Ladies and gentlemen, 
the chicken cannon target of 99. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. During the past two months, our highly trained personnel have been tabulating the avalanche of votes that have made their way to headquarters. Even though the government has cut back our supply of chickens, our twin cannons are ready to blast the top targets of 1999. First target in our countdown, future former Ottawa Senator Alexei Yashin. When ready, fire! Looks like Alexei has gone on the injury reserve list permanently. <laughs> Your next choice, a perennial favorite. <laughs> ah, he's too easy a target. Well, on second thought, fire! <laughs> I can hardly wait till he comes back for a third term. Next, that inane, vacant-headed pretty boy known as Ricky Martin. I don't know about you, but I've heard that annoying song so often it's driven my vida loca. And fire! Ooh. I may not be a music critic, but I know what I like. Next is a man who is living proof. If at first you don't succeed, then make the same mistake over and over again. I'm talking about the one and only Sprinter Ben Johnson. This walking drugstore has tested positive for most every substance with the possible exception of urine. Ben, you've got not one, not two, but three strikes. You're out! That's what I call a positive test result. Your next choice, one of the most hideous, vile, repulsive creatures to appear in decades. A disgusting intrusion on our everyday lives. I'm talking, of course, about that little Pokemon, Pikachu. <laughs> Let's see you evolve out of this, Pikachu. Fire! We've reached the point we've all been waiting for. Having tabulated our vigilant viewers' votes from across the country, your most requested chicken cannon target of 1999, the one we've all had enough of. Audience, give me a Y. Y. Give me a two. two. Give me a K. K. What have you got? Y. Y. Two. K. K. Ammunition, in honor of the Millennium Bug, a handful of bugs. Some uh, microchips and dip. Since everyone is stocking up on food for midnight tonight, a can of Scarios. And some donuts filled with Y2KY jelly. Because this whole situation has driven us all nuts, a pound of nutty peanut butter. And to top it off, 2,000 flushes. And when you are ready, fire! Thanks to Tara Baxter from Burton, Manitoba, one of many who suggested our chicken cannon target of 99. Tara will receive the Air Force Video Yearbook, Volume 6, The Chicken Cannon, blasting us into the next millennium. Memories of 99 November. Good evening, fellow Albertans. I am leading this province in a bold new direction. <laughs> Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I am Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. 
Our top story, amidst the barrage of criticism from the opposition, Human Resources Minister Jane Stewart defended herself, saying, there is too much talk about my screw-up in human resources. Nobody bothers to mention I also screwed up at Indian Affairs. <laughs> Minister is looking forward to her new job, Minister who needs a job grant because she's unemployed. <laughs> According to a survey in Sport Magazine, professional athletes felt Canada is the worst place to play. The publication has since retracted this statement after realizing their questionnaire forgot to include the city of Buffalo. <laughs> KFC has taken out ads denying the rumor they bred genetically engineered chickens with no heads or feathers. <laughs> Company spokesman said KFC birds are 100% all natural. <laughs> Three prominent Canadian aid agencies have joined together to urge the government to boost military spending. They hope to raise enough to recruit another soldier. <laughs> Still with military news, our army is replacing its fleet of tanks with a more threatening and intimidating assault machine. Hockey moms who drive sport utility vehicles. <laughs> Actor James Doohan, who played Scotty on Star Trek, is going to be a father at age 80. It just proves there may be snow on the dilithium crystals, but there's still fire in the phaser. <laughs> Apparently, after all these years, he still doesn't know the difference between beam me up, Scotty, and knock me up, Scotty. <laughs> we'll be back after this. Chicken Cannon News is brought to you by... Religious Nut Bars. <laughs> Favorite snack food of extremists worldwide. They're tasty and totally nuts. <laughs> the Canadian Security and Intelligence Service is worried that the loss of secret documents last fall could be disastrous. CSIS officials feel public confidence could be shaken if certain secrets become known. The biggest secret is... <laughs> CSIS agents aren't very smart. <laughs> A woman who chained up her daughter to prevent her from running away has been acquitted. The mother was so relieved, she went home and let her husband out of his cage. <laughs> Singer Madonna is considering having another baby. David Crosby was unavailable for comment. <laughs> Madonna said she might consider Crosby if she wanted a child that is a fat, balding, stoned-out cokehead. <laughs> Pillsbury wants to broaden its market by appealing more to ethnic groups. In a media conference, they unveiled their new corporate spokesman... Poppin' Fresh Daddy. <laughs> Air Alaska officials were in San Francisco for a grand jury investigation. After insisting their airline meets all safety standards, they left and took a bus back to their head office in Seattle. <laughs> With Valentine's Day around the corner, greeting card sales are at an all-time high. A nationwide survey showed this year's most popular poem, Roses are red, violets are blue, I gave you my love, you gave me the flu. <laughs> Now it's time to salute the Newsmaker of the Week. Our target is, of course, that champion of your tax dollars, Jane Stewart. Yo, <laughs> Cannon Dolores. Our ammunition, rotten apples, <laughs> leftover pastry. Handful of loose cash that was just flying around. <laughs> Bureaucratic red tape. <laughs> Since her ministry has turned into a dog's breakfast, a dog's bre breakfast. <laughs> and to top it off, jello. There's always room for jello. <laughs> and when ready, fire. <laughs> Grab that, Jane. Our thanks to vigilant viewer Nancy Gardner of Yellowknife Northwest Territories for suggesting our target and ammo. Nancy wins our brand new souvenir video, Air Force New Year's Eve 1999. The Chicken Cannon. Your tax dollars at work until the grant runs out. <laughs>
Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Our top story, Ontario parents are outraged about the distribution of a manual instructing students how to use handguns. The Federation of Anglers and Hunters apologized for sending the offensive literature to high schools, saying it was a big mistake. The manuals were meant for elementary schools. <laughs> when asked why hunters would need handguns anyway, the Federation said for home use. You never know when you might get attacked by a vicious squirrel. <laughs> In a related story, Smith & Wesson are going to childproof their weapons by adding locks to them. The National Rifle Association is furious, saying many of its members have yet to master the ability to open a Tylenol bottle. <laughs> Anne Murray has declined the offer to sing the nominated song, Blame Canada, at this year's Academy Awards. She said if anyone should sing a song called Blame Canada, it's Lucien Bouchard. <laughs> Fifty-five stolen Oscar statuettes for this weekend's award show have been recovered, and police are still questioning their prime suspect, Jim Carrey. <laughs> there was a daring daylight robbery today. Armed gunmen stopped a Brinks truck and siphoned off the entire tank of gas. <laughs> In Scotland, scientists have successfully cloned five piglets. A spokesperson for Greenpeace said if Scottish researchers really want to help humanity, they should come up with a way to exterminate bagpipes. <laughs> a woman has been found guilty of stalking Whitney Houston. For those of you who don't know, Whitney Houston is a loud vocal device used by campers to scare away wild animals. <laughs> Chicken Cannon News is brought to you by the Protein Power High Fat Diet Plan. The low-carbohydrate weight loss program that lets you eat all the steak, eggs, bacon, butter, ice cream, and cheesecake you want. You'll look great. You'll be dead, but you'll look great. <laughs> the new Peter Mansbridge game show has been postponed, but producers are working on another show, Canadian Jeopardy. To win, contestants must phrase their answers in the form of an apology. <laughs> Authorities in Britain are trying to stop illegal drug trafficking on the Internet. They first became aware of this activity when a teenage girl wanting to buy cocaine online was hospitalized after she tried to snort her mouse. <laughs> Federal MP John Nunziata has said he intends to run for mayor of Toronto. He will face such frontrunners as current mayor Mel Lastman and transvestite Enza. <laughs> My money's on Enza. At least we know what he's hiding. <laughs> In Pennsylvania, a woman who was stabbed while walking to the grocery store continued to shop, not realizing a knife was sticking out of her back. To make matters worse, she was denied access to the express checkout because the cashier counted the knife as her ninth item. <laughs> now it's time to salute your choice for Newsmaker of the Week. Our target is... Those greedy oil companies for their outrageous prices. Load cannon, Dorothy! Our ammunition, beans, so we can give them gas. Cheese slices. Coffee mate, and other edible oil products, rancid tuna, left over from the last oil spill, some Alberta tar sand, some unrefined oil, and nature's little wonder product, petroleum jelly. And when ready... companies. Our thanks to vigilant viewer Aaron McDonald of Halifax, Nova Scotia for suggesting our target and ammo. Aaron wins our latest souvenir video, Air Force New Year's Eve. The Chicken Cannon, Canada's unleaded weapon of choice. <laughs> Very good, men. 
Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. I'm Teresa. Our top story, an American has bought the Montreal Canadiens hockey team. The new owner guarantees the team will be in the playoffs by the year 2026. <laughs> what he can't guarantee is that the team will still be in Montreal. <laughs> Auto manufacturing giant Daimler Chrysler has announced massive job cuts in Canada. Officials cite three reasons for the cuts. One, rising gas prices. Two, a slowdown of the economy. And three, every hockey mom in Canada has already bought a minivan. <laughs> Saskatchewan now has a new leader. After four ballots, Lorne Calvert was named premier of the most boring province in Canada. <laughs> Mr. Calvert narrowly defeated runner-up Wilson the Volleyball from the movie Castaway. <laughs> the Ontario government has offered residents of Walkerton $2,000 each as compensation. Now, residents of Mississauga are demanding equal compensation, saying having to live in Mississauga should be worth something. <laughs> Acting President George W. Bush is planning to go ahead with Pentagon plans for a new Star Wars missile defense system. He gave approval on one condition that he gets to play OBW Kenobi. <laughs> in Colorado, the last two of seven escaped convicts were caught in a Holiday Inn. The two men turned themselves in after they saw the price of the items in their minibar. <laughs> PQ leader Bernard Landry continues to refer to the dictionary to prove his use of the French word chiffon did not mean the Canadian flag. We here at Chicken Cannon News decided to look up the French word le screw up. Guess what we found? <laughs> Lucien Bouchard will be in Italy next week as part of his Lucien Bouchard farewell tour. On Monday, he'll be in the Vatican, where he has granted the Pope a private audience. <laughs> Chicken Cannon News is brought to you by Canadian Alliance Cookies. They're tasty, look appealing, and they're full of nuts. <laughs> A Vancouver study has concluded hands-free cell phones do not make driving safer. They do, however, make it easier for drivers to apply their makeup and drink coffee. <laughs> and now it's time for the politically incorrect news story of the week. The Canadian Mint is issuing a $50 bill with founding feminists on one side. Feminists are pleased with the choice, but insisted there not be a smiling Prime Minister Borden on the other side. The women say they don't want to see a man enjoying himself. <laughs> That was the politically incorrect news story of the week. The Genie Awards celebrating Canada's motion picture industry were handed out Monday night. Filmgoers say it's getting tougher to see Canadian movies, especially now that we have only one airline. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky just turned 40. Today, the great one signed a new endorsement deal. He will be spokesman for the new Craftmatic hockey stick. <laughs> The TV show ER continues to be a hit in Canada. Last week's episode had nearly 2 million viewers, which coincidentally is the same number of people currently waiting in Canadian emergency rooms. <laughs> and now it's time to salute our newsmaker of the week. Our target is that great Canadian patriot, the Quebec politician who has separated from his marbles, but not from his dictionary, Bernard Landry. <laughs> Low cannon, Dolores. Our ammunition eggs, separated, of course. Some red rags. Fruit Loops. French fries, pardon, lay French fries. A pocket French dictionary. Crazy glue. Tomatoes. And to top it off, the breakfast of separatists, cognac. <laughs> and when ready, Dolores. Fire! Paul Bernie. Thanks to James Nolan from St. Marie de Kent, New Brunswick, one of many who voted on our website, airfarce.com, to suggest our chicken cannon target of the week. James will receive the newest Airfarce video or DVD, Do Not Cross This Line. 
The Chicken Cannon, reality television, Canadian style. Welcome to this. Chicken Cannon News. Civilians, I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. <laughs> Walkerton, a 350-page report has just been released. It claims contamination was caused by surface water bearing cattle manure. To prevent a recurrence, it recommends government immediately upgrade water treatment procedures, or at the very least, equip each cow with a cork. <laughs> There are allegations that Secretary of State for Multiculturalism, Hetty Fry, has a website with direct links to pornographic sites like Horny Housewives, Twink Studs, Huge Knocking Boobs, and the NDP homepage. <laughs> Ms. Fry immediately denied the allegation, saying she's never been linked with the NDP homepage. <laughs> In Yugoslavia, Vojslav Kostanica has officially replaced Slobodan Milosevic as president. Throughout the political upheaval, observers from around the world agree on one thing. Yugoslavian politicians have eye charts for names. <laughs> in the wake of events in Yugoslavia, two Alberta men held there on terrorism charges have been released. At first, authorities said they were reluctant to release the men, but then said knowing they had to return to a province governed by Ralph Klein was punishment enough. <laughs> In his new memoirs, Boris Yeltsin admits his love for alcohol. The Russian president says he knew he had a problem when during a state dinner he appointed his liver as the new head of the KGB. <laughs> The man who invented the computer chip has been awarded the Nobel Physics Prize. He was unable to email his acceptance because his computer locked up. <laughs> there is a proposal to rename Yukon's Mount Logan after Pierre Trudeau. The plan calls for a Mount Rushmore-style alteration to reflect the personality of the late Prime Minister. <laughs> We'll be back with more after this. Stockwell Day. Got milk? <laughs> An Ontario convict has been asked to be transferred to a federal prison because the health care is better there. Mike Harris found out about this and now wants all ambulances redirected from overcrowded hospitals to Kingston Penitentiary. <laughs> Harrison McCain, founder of McCain's Foods, is recovering from a heart attack. He's just been transferred from a hospital in Regina to the frozen food section of Safeway. <laughs> in the U.S., presidential candidates George W. Bush and Al Gore are almost even in the polls. After their latest debate, here are the results of our chicken cannon survey. 10% say Bush won the debate. 11% say Gore won the debate. And an overwhelming 79% said those guys are so boring they should be in Canadian politics. <laughs> Now it's time to salute our Newsmaker of the Week. Our target is... Slobodan Milosevic. No Kevin Delores. Our ammunition, rotten eggs. Rotten tomatoes. In honor of his regime. Cocoa Puffs, because he is cuckoo. Some fresh ground weasel bits. Some scum. Scarios. A healthy serving of snake helper. And in the spirit of Stockwell Day and the Prime Minister, chocolate milk <laughs> and pie. And when ready, fire! <laughs> Slavi, you never look better. 
The chicken cannon. Someday all democracies will have one. Well done. Well done, Denise. Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Our top story, it was another tough week for financial markets. First, Nortel cut another 5,000 jobs from their workforce and then converted their head office into a dollar store. <laughs> China refuses to return the captured U.S. spy plane. The Pentagon has announced harsh retaliatory measures. Unless the plane is returned, they'll make China give back the Academy Award for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. <laughs> In Yugoslavia, former dictator Slobodan Milosevic has been arrested. Current leader Vojislav Kostunica, who ordered the arrest, said no politician can operate above the law, with the possible exception of the Prime Minister of Canada. <laughs> it's now official with the existing escalation of foot and mouth disease in Great Britain. There is now only one totally safe meat, spam. <laughs> Many people in Britain are eliminating meat entirely from their diets, including the one fat lady. Here she is before the meat scare, and here she is today. <laughs> Television ratings for the XFL have hit an all-time low. At last weekend's games, the stands were so empty, league officials considered changing their name to CFL. <laughs> Chicken Cannon News is brought to you by Juan Antonio Sama Ranch style dressing. <laughs> Creamy, rich, and just like an International Olympic Committee member, the bottle fits easily into your back pocket. <laughs> Bell Express View has decided to remove from its lineup two adult channels broadcasting obscene, tasteless, objectionable material. From now on, those who want that kind of thing will have to tune in to the parliamentary channel. <laughs> A recent survey reveals Air Canada has the most number of complaints from passengers. At this time, I'd like to speak in favor of Air Canada. I'd like to, but I can't. <laughs> in Amsterdam, four gay couples exchanged wedding vows to celebrate a new law allowing same-sex marriages and equal rights. The response has been immediate. The Ricola guys have moved to Holland. <laughs> U.S. President George W. Bush wants to opt out of the Kyoto Treaty. Mr. Bush was quoted as saying, What's the point? I don't even drive a Kyoto. <laughs> in other news, scientists predict in the near future people will live to age 200. They also believe if the average man lives that long, he would have no face, because by that age, his pants would be pulled up over his head. <laughs> and now it's time to salute our Newsmaker of the Week. Our target is for watching Nortel stock drop from $120 to $20 while taking home a bonus of $135 million himself, Company President John Roth. <laughs> Lord Karen Dolores, our ammunition sour grapes. Because it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, Buckley's cough syrup. Kraft dinner. Because that's all people who invested in Nortel can afford to eat. <laughs> Shredded stock certificates, which now are more valuable as insulation. Some shrimp, which we know are spineless bottom feeders. And to top it off, some jello. There's always room for jello. And when ready. Fire! Now, that's a profit warning. <laughs> Thanks to Miriam Dostert and Dave Ellison from Vernon, B.C., two of many who voted on our website, airfarce.com, to suggest our chicken cannon target of the week. Miriam and Dave will receive the newest Air Force video or DVD, Do Not Cross This Line. The chicken cannon, an investment that really pays off. <laughs> Much more Air Force to come. It's our one-hour season finale double-headed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicken Cannon Target of the Year, 2000. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me, wait for it, Teresa.
All month long, headquarters has been tabulating your votes. And now, without the benefit of a Supreme Court-ordered recount, our twin cannons are ready to blast the top targets of the year 2000. Our ammunition, of course, a cruise chicken. Canada's smart weapon. Our first target for weaseling his way to the top of the dung heap, winner of TV's Survivor Show, Richard Hatch. This guy is so off any island I'd be on. And when ready, fire! Next, that singer of such banal, superficial, revolting, vapid, stomach-churning pop songs, Britney Spears. Fire! Oops, I did it again. Next is a man who believes the best things in life are free. But eventually, you'll have to face the lawsuit. Toronto Mayor Mel Lastman. As we found out this year, more than his hair was getting plugged. This paternal bad boy has been called loud, obnoxious, pushy, arrogant, and egocentric. In other words, he's the perfect mayor for Toronto. Fire! Our next choice, Mr. Nice Guy of Hockey, Marty McSorley. <laughs> Marty was convicted in court of using his stick as a weapon. When ready, no, no, wait. This poor man has already been through enough. It isn't right to shoot him with the chicken cannon. I didn't mean to do that, Rep. I was only trying to get his attention. <laughs> Your next choice for creating the biggest American fiasco since Who Wants to Marry a Multi-Millionaire? The U.S. Presidential Election. <laughs> Turns out democracy's shining knights can't tell their Chad from their dimple. And fire! Now, that's an electoral vote I can get behind. <laughs> all right, now comes the moment we've all been anticipating. Your most requested chicken cannon target of 2000. For putting Canadians through the totally unnecessary exercise of a federal election, Jean Chrétien and the other party leaders. <laughs> uh, our ammunition for the Prime Minister, cream pie. Perfect to be tossed in his face. Stockwell Day, a carton of chocolate milk. Gilles Duceppe, a flaky quiche covered in a rich Bernays sauce. For Alexa McDonough, a healthy helping of the new breakfast cereal, Loser Krispies. Joe Clark, porridge. <laughs> and to top it all off, in honor of the way the candidates conducted themselves, mud. <laughs> we will sling some mud. And when ready... Fire! <laughs> To Andrew Johnson from the PN, one of many who voted on our website, airfarce.com, to suggest our chicken cannon target of 2000. Andrew will receive the new Air Force video or DVD, Do Not Cross This Line. The Chicken Cannon, Canada's voice of the people.
Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Our top story, Federal <laughs> Public Works Minister Alfonso Galliano has been accused of political interference and fixing jobs. The allegations were flatly denied by Galliano's spokesman, Tony Soprano. <laughs> A 15-year-old pilot crashed his plane into a Tampa skyscraper that housed the offices of a legal firm. Though no one was there at the time, three of the firm's lawyers who were vacationing in Miami are suing for whiplash. <laughs> Argentina has defaulted on loans of $141 billion, much of which is owed to Canadian banks. In a related story, starting next week, Canadian banks will increase service charges from $1.25 to $700. <laughs> And a bounce check will cost you three million. <laughs> Argentina has voted in five presidents in two weeks. At this rate, analysts say even Stockwell Day could get elected. <laughs> in Regina, 14 people who ate at the same restaurant have contracted E. coli. Officials are not releasing the name of the eating establishment, but warn customers to reconsider dining at any restaurant whose waiters look like this. <laughs> In Europe, the euro dollar is now officially in use. This marks yet another currency worth more than the Canadian dollar. <laughs> Over the holidays, Buffalo, New York was declared a disaster zone. Then, to make matters worse, the city was hit with a snowstorm. <laughs> Here in Canada, meteorologists have noted this winter is one of the mildest in recent memory. The number of drunken snowmobilers going through the ice is way down. <laughs> U.S. forces continue to search the caves in Afghanistan for Osama bin Laden. So far, they've come up empty, but in one Tora Bora cave, they did discover Cat Stevens' career. <laughs> the U.S. military has released a photograph of what is believed to be Osama bin Laden's underground cave system. Here is the cave entrance. And here is a view from inside. <laughs> Due to recent events involving the shoe bomber, Richard Reed, airports have now begun to check inside people's footwear. Security personnel say they're just thankful Richard Reed wasn't the underwear bomber. <laughs> In Toronto this week, the Hells Angels biker gang held a celebration to commemorate their one-year anniversary. Highlights of the occasion included the gang's favorite game, Pin the Tail on the Hooker. <laughs> More news after this. Chicken Cannon News is brought to you by the Australian Tourism Board. Visit Australia, where our smoking section is the entire country. <laughs> the world's oldest man has died. He was 113 years old. Cause of death, he was 113 years old. <laughs> From the world of music, Canadian singer Nelly Furtado has been nominated for four Grammy Awards. With this announcement, Canada is now officially the world's leading producer of screaming divas. <laughs> Michael Jordan and his wife are splitting up after 12 years of marriage. The couple is citing irreconcilable dribbling. <laughs> Lenny Riefenstahl, who produced propaganda films for the Nazis, is having her first movie released in 50 years, coinciding with her 100th birthday. The film is appropriately called, Dude, Where's My Fuhrer? <laughs> An online dealer has just come out with a line of gay dolls which resemble UPS drivers. The dolls are anatomically correct and extremely well endowed. <laughs> the toy can be purchased at HaveWeGotAPackageForYou.com. <laughs> Now, the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time to reveal the Chicken Cannon Newsmaker of the Year. Here are the top five targets of 2001 as voted for by our vigilant viewers. Number five, Conrad Black. Number four, President George W. Bush. Number three, Stockwell Day. Number two, Harry Potter. And our number one newsmaker of the year, the one that Time Magazine was afraid of, Osama bin Laden. <laughs> On this special occasion, I will personally load the chicken cannon. Our ammunition, a mixture of tomatoes, crushed videotape, <laughs> a 
falafel helper. A few nut bars. Some moldy goat cheese. Bathtub scum. And of course, craft dinner. It's always time for craft dinner. And when ready, fire! Al-Qaeda bias. <laughs> Thanks to Benjamin Tank of Melville, Saskatchewan, one of many who suggested our target. Benjamin wins an Air Force mouse pad and T-shirt. The chicken cannon. Terrorists, be afraid. Be very afraid. Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I am Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Our top story, Heritage Minister Sheila Copps has announced plans for an extravagant party in Ottawa this April to honor our Olympic athletes. She said there will be balloons and everything. <laughs> our entire country is encouraged to get together to celebrate a crowning moment in Canadian achievement. Art Eggleton is not invited. <laughs> the troubles for Art Eggleton continue. If the lack of communication between the Defence Minister and the Prime Minister widens any further, the two, by law, will be considered legally married. <laughs> by the way, Mr. Eggleton, if you're watching, we took prisoners in Afghanistan! <laughs> There was a huge protest in British Columbia over Premier Gordon Campbell's plan to cut 11,000 civil servants' jobs and to increase sales tax, school tuition fees, and Medicare premiums. Residents of the province say in nine short months, Campbell has done the impossible, made Glenn Clark look good. <laughs> While visiting Australia, the Queen was informed that the Governor General there had been involved in an alleged sex scandal. Unperturbed, Her Majesty said, that explains why instead of shaking my hand, he tried to grab my ass. <laughs> Alberta Premier Ralph Klein is opposed to the Kyoto Protocol, which limits emission levels of toxic gases. He said, what do you want me to do, stop breathing? To which the rest of Canada said, go for it, Ralph. <laughs> Royal Bank has just reported a first quarter profit of $722 million. Officials say they hope things will pick up next quarter. <laughs> in Ontario, Conservative Party leadership candidate Jim Flaherty has proposed to make living outdoors in public parks and streets illegal. His proposal, called Jail the Homeless, matches two other planks in his platform, elect the heartless and appoint the brainless. <laughs> Flaherty also promised, if he becomes premier, to sell off several unnecessary Ontario fixtures, like the TV Ontario Network, the Provincial Liquor Control Board, and Toronto Mayor Mel Lastman. <laughs> A computer hard drive containing vital information on the Hoover Dam has been stolen. The FBI's number one suspect is known terrorist Osama Bin Beaver. <laughs> Cartooning legend Chuck Jones, creator of such characters as Wile E. Coyote, has passed away. His final words? <laughs> Services for Chuck Jones were held at the Acme Funeral Home. <laughs> the Hubble Space Telescope is getting a makeover. NASA claims once the work is complete, the device will be so powerful it will even be able to spot a Stockwell Day supporter. <laughs> Canada's strong showing at the Winter Olympics has created a patriotic rush to buy Canadian flags. Meeting this demand has become all but impossible for our flag makers in Taiwan. <laughs> it's time now to salute our top newsmaker. It is, of course, for their unbiased work, the Olympic figure skating judges. <laughs> Here to observe and supervise the chicken cannon for this special target, 
are Sergeant Ernie Parolin and Sergeant Lee Matheson from our Canadian Forces. <laughs> Ernie, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. What is your hometown? Princeton, British Columbia. Princeton, British Columbia. And uh, your unit? Princess Patricia's Canadian Line Infantry. Welcome to the show, Lee. Thank you. And what's your hometown? London, Ontario. London, Ontario. And your unit is? The Governor General's Foot Guards in Ottawa. The Governor General's Foot Guards in Ottawa. So I guess there's just the two of you. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Begin proceedings. Bring on the cannon. Load the ammunition. Our ammunition, rotten eggs, pond scum, some slime, Alpo in honor of the judges seeing eye dogs. For the French judge, some quiche and bologna. Some salmon because Something definitely was fishing. <laughs> and to top it off, a maraschino cherry. <laughs> and when ready, fire! What do you say, judges? <laughs> That's what I call a perfect six. If you would like to send our troops in Afghanistan an email or a postcard with a hug from home, now you can. What's that website, Sergeant? www.dnd.ca, sir. And what do they click on, Sergeant? Right to the troops, sir. Good job. The Chicken Cannon, bringing figure skating judges their just desserts. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicken Cannon Target of the Year, 2002. Greetings, civilians. I am Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me, wait for it, Teresa. For the past two months, headquarters has been swamped with your votes. Our twin cannons have had their mothballs removed and are ready to take on the top targets of 2002. Our first target for botching the deregulation of hydro and trying to turn Ontario into a have-not province, Premier Ernie Eves. <laughs> Ernie's never been the same since he split up with Bert. <laughs> our ammunition... An armed scud chicken, Canada's favorite weapon of destruction. And when ready, fire! <laughs> Looks like Ernie's hit the re-election trail a little early. Next is this country's most annoying duo, the Canadian Tire Couple. If I see one more handy-dandy, easy-to-use, five-in-one, battery-operated, pointless gadget, I'll go ballistic. In fact, let's go ballistic. Fire! <laughs> now that's what I call a useless pair of tools. Your next choice, the entertainer who has been voted Father of the Year, Michael Jackson. <laughs> and fire! <laughs> hey, Mikey, don't look now, but you lost more than your nose. <laughs> next target on our viewers' hit list, Alan Rock. 
minister who set up the gun registry program that will cost Canadians over a billion dollars. It will go on costing taxpayers as long as the program is running. Alan, this chicken's for you. Fire! <laughs> See you shoot off your mouth now. <laughs> all right, now comes the moment you've been waiting for all year. Your most requested chicken cannon target of 2002. A man who has refused to consider the Kyoto Accord, who has made Canada's lumber industry go soft. The man who wants to invade Iraq and will as soon as he finds an excuse. President George W. Bush. <laughs> Iraqi oil, because he's determined to get his hands on it. A generous helping of Texas Range fertilizer. And he's got plenty to spare. Uh, put in three horses worth. Some pretzels. And some scarios. Some smallpox vaccine, just to be safe. <laughs> Some Crawford barbecue sauce to spice things up. And of course, a sugar coating to make it all seem nice. And when ready, fire! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Tom Donnelly from Seattle, Washington, one of many Canadians and Americans who voted at airfarce.com to nominate W as our number one chicken cannon target of 2002. Tom will receive the new Air Farce video, Another Year of the Farce. And maybe a visit from the CIA. <laughs> Chicken Cannon, Canada just doesn't get any better. From the Chicken Cannon News Center, on location in Brandon, Manitoba, this is Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Air Canada has filed for bankruptcy protection. The national carrier plans to restructure itself and once again become a world-class airline by streamlining its workforce, improving customer relations, and restoring passenger service to Brandon. <laughs> the SARS virus has claimed another victim. The Rolling Stones have canceled their China tour. Said one official, China has enough diseases already. <laughs> Celine Dion kicked off her three-year stint in Las Vegas. Critics fear she may have difficulty keeping her American fans because she has two strikes against her. She's both French and Canadian. <laughs> A recent report from Baghdad says Saddam Hussein has had plastic surgery. Here is the Iraqi leader before the war started. And here he is now. <laughs> In other news, Alberta's Randy Furby will represent Canada at the World Curling Championships next week. Furby says his toughest opponent will be Scottish skip Tickle Me Jock. <laughs> Time now to salute our special chicken cannon target. Company 
in the second cannon, ladies and gentlemen, the 26th Field Regiment Royal Canadian Artillery, Brandon's Reserve Regiment. In honor of our trip to Brandon, our audience will determine our target. By your applause, is our target Manitoba's Gary Dewar, the dullest premier west of Ontario. <laughs> Is it the talking bison? <laughs> Hope speaker for MTS, the Manitoba Telephone Company. Or Federal Minister of Agriculture, Lyle Van Cleef. <laughs> Our target of choice is Lyle Van Cleef. Here to help us fire the cannon is Brandon Mayor Dave Burgess. Brandon Mayor Dave Burgess will now load the cannon. Our ammunition, some Wheaties. For not supporting wheat farmers. A generous helping of clam chowder. Some grab all because farmers are sick of his policies. <laughs> some rotten strawberries. <laughs> some uh, liquid manure. Okay. <laughs> and all the trimmings. Okay. Ooh. I like a mayor who really gets into it. Go for it. Go for it. It's like a city council meeting here. All right, and when ready, watch your step. When ready, fire. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, plant that, Lyle. <laughs> thanks to Mayor Dave Burgess for his help, and thanks to the 26th Field Regiment Royal Canadian Artillery. Great buttons, by the way. <laughs> the chicken cannon. One day, all wars will be fought this way. our show for tonight and this season. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks for watching. See you next season. Good night. Good night. The Chicken Cannon News Center. This is Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Hi, <laughs> Even after President Bush's State of the Union address, France, Germany, China, and Russia have said they will not join the war against Iraq. Luckily for President Bush, he did get the support of Exxon, Mobil, and Shell. <laughs> In a surprise development today, UN weapons inspectors found a connection between Iraq's alleged weapons of mass destruction and George W. Bush. Both have empty warheads. <laughs> Prime Minister Kretzian is proceeding with guidelines that would severely limit corporate contributions to MPs. He's calling the legislation the I'm going to get back at that vulture Paul Martin if it's the last thing I do bill. In news publishers making news news, the Toronto Star is being sued by that city's police force for $2.7 billion after it suggested police practiced racial profiling. Headlines in the Globe and Mail said, Toronto Star hit with huge lawsuit. The Toronto Sun said, Cops sue Star for billions. And the Star's headline, Cold Snap continues. <laughs> 
Filmmaker David Cronenberg has been appointed to the Order of Canada. We have his reaction. <laughs> Coming up later, Russian President Putin and Dobby the Harry Potter elf separated at birth. Granddaughter of the Greek shipping magnate Aristotle Onassis has inherited almost one billion dollars. This is the most money inherited by a young woman from a dead old guy since Anna Nicole Smith. <laughs> An anonymous person spent over a hundred thousand dollars for a collection of Elvis Presley's hair. Although the new owner remains secret, CBC News watchers may draw their own conclusions. <laughs> The National Geographic is coming out with a swimsuit edition. Those who have seen the issue feel the most talked about pictorial will be the beach shot of an African beauty. <laughs> Ooh, works for me. <laughs> it's time now to salute our Chicken Cannon Newsmaker of the Week. Choose a fair and impartial target. We, of course, use the wheel of chicken. <laughs> and our target this week is. Attention is building. <laughs> well, how about that? It's BC Premier Gordon Campbell, the man who drinks to take his mind off the dangers of driving. And here to help load the cannon, direct from Possum Lodge, Harold. Thank you. Hi, Colonel Teresa. It's a real pleasure to be here. This is part of my community service. You know, I get to load the cannon. I shoot stuff in the cannon. Because when the cannon shoots out, I'll go blah, all over the place. Blah, all over the place. Blah. I'm just going to go load the cannon now. Our ammunition. Hawaiian pineapple, which blows chunks. <laughs> Crushed coconut. <laughs> A Hawaiian leg, because Gordon Campbell may be saying aloha to his career. <laughs> A souvenir t-shirt. Ripped, of course. Some uh, ground coffee to sober him up. <laughs> An extra-large Jumbo Mai Tai. <laughs> and let's not forget the tiny little umbrella. <laughs> and... When ready... <laughs> What's up, Gordon? <laughs> I, I shot him, I shot him, and they're all wet, just like I was... Like, but it was early, but I'd still... I'm gonna stand over here. Thanks to David Corrin from Vancouver, who was one of many who suggested our target. David, you'll receive a copy of the latest Air Farce video, Another Year of the Farce. Soon to be a DVD, The Chicken Cannon. Canada's weapon of messy destruction. From the Chicken Cannon News Center, this is Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. <laughs> Mike Harris announced he will not run for the leadership of the newly formed Conservative Alliance Party. The ex-Ontario Premier said... Ruining one party is enough. <laughs> Reverend Jean Robinson was consecrated as the first openly gay bishop in the global Anglican community. Angry protesters demanded a return to the good old days when they only had secretly gay bishops in the global <laughs> Anglican community. Good news, the U.S. plans to lift its ban on Canadian cattle. The process of moving the cattle south will take a while, as many of the cows are still in line, waiting to have their visas processed. <laughs> Canada's provincial tourism ministers are promising funds for a coordinated advertising blitz to deal with our recent negative image stemming from Mad Cow, SARS, and West Nile. 
So far, the leading slogans are, Visit Canada, you probably won't die. <laughs> Come to Canada, great health care and free inoculations. <laughs> and Canada, at least we don't have the clap. <laughs> Saskatchewan had an election this week in a bizarre turn of events. One hour after the polls had closed, it was revealed Ernie Eves had left a $5.6 billion deficit there, too. <laughs> Madonna may be turning one of her children's books into an animated film that would feature the singer's trademark artistic nature. The proposed title, Finding Nemo's G-Spot. <laughs> On Tuesday this week, Jean Chrétien made 47 patronage appointments. The Prime Minister denied they were patronage appointments and said they were simply favors for friends. <laughs> Walmart-owned Sam's Club has just opened in Canada. For those of you not familiar, Sam's Club is a big box store that sells a huge variety of large quantity, large format products that you don't need or have room for, but buy anyway because the price is too good to pass up. <laughs> in a related story, in the U.S., the Walmart logo smile face was deported today. <laughs> when it was revealed, the logo was working illegally in the country. <laughs> its real identity... Ombre Smilo Peso. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. Chicken Cannon, Target of the Year, 2003. <laughs> Greetings, civilians. I am Colonel State. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> Headquarters has been so overwhelmed with your votes, we've been forced to remove the mothballs from our twin cannons. In fact, we've removed the entire moth. And are now ready to take on the top targets of 2003. Our first target, Canadian Idol host, Ben Mulrooney. <laughs> A.K.A. Brian Mulrooney Light. Our ammunition, Canada's favorite weapon of destruction, an armed scud chicken. And, when ready... Fire! <laughs> ben, you got my vote. Next, it's the most annoying couple since Ashton and Demi hooked up. Ray and Carl, the blockbuster hamster and bunny. Ray and Carl, get ready for your next job as the main attraction at a Ukrainian barbecue. <laughs> Our next choice, the Entrepreneur of the Year, for his fine work in taking Air Canada from an international air carrier to a make-work project for bankruptcy lawyers, CEO Robert Milton. Yeah. And fire! <laughs> Now, there's a frequent flyer benefit I can get behind. <laughs> Next target on our viewers' hit list, Dalton McGinty. <laughs> the new Ontario Premier who never met a campaign promise he couldn't break. <laughs> Dalton, I promise you, you're going to like this one. Fire! <laughs> There's a change, we shot off his mouth. <laughs> and now, the moment you've been anticipating all year, your most requested chicken cannon target for the year 2003. The powerful American triumvirate that believes war is swell. George Bush, Donald Rumsfeld, and Dick Cheney. Our ammunition. Iraqi crude. Oily, just like our targets. Some delicious cranberry sauce, candy jams, mashed potatoes, and gravy. To go with the three turkeys. Freedom fries. Don't forget the ketchup. Some fudge for the fudged intelligence reports. Some head lice from the Saddam Hussein collection. And of course, to top it all off, a maraschino cherry. When ready... from Ottawa, one of many Canadians and Americans who voted at airfarce.com to nominate our number one chicken cannon target of 2003. Nevin wins the new Airfarce video and DVD, 4x4. Four four. And Nevin, your name will be put on the list at all U.S. border crossings. <laughs> the Chicken Cannon, serving up a taste of Canada around the world. Thanks for watching.
Air Force returns with more new shows starting Friday, January 9th at 8 o'clock. And from the cast and crew of Air Force... Chicken Cannon News Center. This is Chicken Cannon News. Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Some of my close friends call me Teresa. Bye, Teresa. <laughs> Reports from Ottawa indicate Paul Martin may be overreacting to the sponsorship scandal. Today, the Prime Minister fired the heads of 12 more Crown Corporations, four backbenchers, and his cleaning lady. <laughs> Mrs. Martin is furious. <laughs> After complaints his force is behind the times, Toronto's chief of police, Julian Fantino, is going to hire more black detectives. His first recruit, Link from Mod Squad. <laughs> U.S. presidential candidate John Kerry was campaigning today in Florida to a large group of well-mannered retired people. He cut his speech short when he realized Canadians can't vote in the American election. <laughs> Meanwhile, George Bush ramped up his re-election ad campaign by introducing some new slogans. Vote Bush and he won't invade you. <laughs> Vote Bush, you may as well. We're going to fix it so he wins again anyway. <laughs> and the slogan Mr. Bush wrote himself. Bush believes in freedom. <laughs> In a shocking story, the Department of National Defense paid out $160 million to a computer giant, Hewlett Packard, and received nothing in return. Oh, this just in, there has been a mysterious airstrike on Hewlett Packard. <laughs> Never mess with the Canadian military. <laughs> this portion of Chicken Cannon News is brought to you by the CNIBC, the bank for blind people. <laughs> Pop singer Avril Lavigne is performing free concerts at malls across North America. That's reason number 1012 why I hate going to the mall. <laughs> and now the you story of the week. Two employees at Wendy's in North Carolina were caught after taking a bath in the dishwashing sink. The restaurant's manager became suspicious when he noticed a new item on the menu, the short and curly burger. <laughs> I did warn you. The leader of South Korea, Ro Mu Hyun, has been impeached for not living up to his promises. Ontario Premier Dalton McGuinty was unavailable for comment. <laughs> After orbiting the Earth, China's first astronaut said the Great Wall could not be seen from space. He did say Luciano Pavarotti was clearly visible. <laughs> the renowned singer gave his final opera performance to a packed house in New York last week. He received an 11-minute ovation from the audience, then ate them. <laughs> Jean Bertrand Aristide, who was forced out as president of Haiti because he was out of touch and lived a life of extravagance and unaccountability, is currently considering a new position, Canada's next governor general. <laughs> Paul Martin has ordered the Treasury Board to review Governor General Adrian Clarkson's budget, and I've been reviewing it too. Ms. Clarkson spent $41 million last year. How to explain that? She's a liberal. <laughs> Granted, the Governor General is an important figurehead. It makes me proud every time I see Canada's official Apple doll and her hamster welcoming the Minister for Parks and Recreation from Borneo. <laughs> She's a very busy person. Who else would selflessly fly to 41 Arctic communities just to get ice for her crown royal? <laughs> That's not news, it's just one colonel's opinion. <laughs> In other news, Canada's insurance companies announced record profits of $2.63 billion in 2003. That's an increase in profits of 673% over the previous year. And still, my house and car insurance go up. <laughs> Time now for our Chicken Cannon Target of the Week. Our target? What do you know? Canada's Charging Insurance Company. Load Cannon Dolores, our ammo, slime, Shredded policies with lots of fine prints. 
<laughs> Tuna. Well past its best before date because something does seem fishy. A little lemon for flavor. A healthy dose of Pepto-Bismol to help quell the sick feeling they give us. Craft dinner because that's all people can afford after paying their car premiums. Some leftover fur from a weasel. And to top it off, Funyuns. Whatever the hell they are. And when ready, fire! I don't know if they're insured, but they are covered. <laughs> Thanks to Janet Swanson of Burlington, Ontario, who suggested our target. Janet, you'll receive a copy of the latest Air Force DVD, 4x4. The Chicken Cannon. I'm loving it. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, the Chicken Cannon, Target of the Year 2004. <laughs> Greetings, civilians. I'm Colonel Stacy. Chicken Cannon headquarters has been overwhelmed with votes. Unfortunately, most of them are faxes from CIBC. <laughs> but our vigilant viewers have clearly spoken and... Our twin cannons stand ready to greet the top targets of 2004. Our first target, Vladimir Putin and Viktor Yanukovych. <laughs> for trying to fix the Ukrainian election. The Moscow-based duo still has a lot to learn from the Bush-Cheney family. <laughs> Our ammunition, Canada's most reliable weapon of choice, the Scud Chicken. <laughs> and when ready... Fire! No recount necessary there. Next is the man at the center of the sponsorship scandal, Alfonso Galliano. Looks like the sponsorship has really hit the fan. <laughs> Our next choice, a vile, repulsive personality who threatens to corrupt the morals of our youth, SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Hiya. Fire. No more Krabby Patties for you, SpongeBob. <laughs> Next on our viewers hit list, Mississauga's favorite MP, Carolyn Parrish. <laughs> for her fine work improving U.S.-Canada relations. Fire! <laughs> looks like you shot off your mouth once too often. <laughs> now, the moment we've been waiting the last 12 months for, your most requested chicken cannon target for 2004. Canada's national game wreckers, Gary Bettman and Bob Goodenow. <laughs> this high-profile pair is responsible for reducing the Canadian male lifestyle on Saturday night to watching Chick Flicks with Ron McLean. <laughs> Our ammunition, in honor of the negotiation skills of both gentlemen, Weasel Kibble. <laughs> Some composted Toronto maple leaves. Some oil from Edmonton. And some Pittsburgh penguin crap. From our unused concession stands, nachos and cheese. How about some extra cheese? And 
in honor of these two gentlemen, a couple of wieners. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> it's the only game in town. Thanks to Cameron Elliott from Rossay, New Brunswick, one of many who voted at airfarce.com to nominate our number one chicken cannon target of 2004. Cameron wins the new Air Force video and DVD from headlines to punchlines and some beaver floss. <laughs> the chicken cannon, Canada's answer to the missile shield. <laughs> Bite my Toblerone? Should I try that line again? Want to lick my Toblerone? <laughs> I was ready for bite, I wasn't ready for lick. Civilians, I'm Colonel Stacy. Our twin cannons are standing by to execute our vigilant viewers' top chicken cannon targets of 2007. Once again, George W. Bush and his favorite clone Stephen Harper were among the top vote getters. So we're inducting them into the Chicken Cannon Hall of Fame. This plaque will hold a prestigious place in the Chicken Cannon Hall of Fame. <laughs> Now, to business. Our first target, taser-happy law enforcement officers, who in 2007 adopted the motto to serve and to zap. Our ammunition, Canada's most devastating weapon, the Scud Chicken. And when ready, fire. Look, he's tased and confused. <laughs> Next target, athletes who let us down by bulking up. People like Marion Jones, Roger Clemens, and Barry Bonds, who between them set the record for the most syringes in the butt. <laughs> hey, here's something else you can shoot up. Fire! <laughs> Next target, for his spine work in iceberg prevention. Our very own environment minister, John Baer. <laughs> and when ready, fire. <laughs> Woo! Looks like we put a hole in your ozone. <clears throat> Next, the person who has proven that Canada can produce world-class chiselers, Mr. Conrad Black. Bye-bye, Barbara. Hello, Bubba. <clears throat> Fire! <laughs> now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Your most requested chicken cannon target for 2007. It's a tie. Brian Mulroney and Carl Heinz Schreiber. <laughs> the stars of the ongoing soap opera, All My Kickbacks. Our ammunition... Rancid pork rinds from the bottom of the barrel. And uh, Oktoberfest mustard to make it all go down a little easier. <laughs> Sauerkraut. Which also describes Carl Heinz. <laughs> we have some shredded hotel receipts, all under the name of Prime Minister John Smith. Slushy, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Two scoops of black forest cake, jam side up. Mm. <laughs> A few 
Francis of Blarney. An envelope stuffed full of an undisclosed amount of cash. A dollop of jet fuel from the Airbus. And a honking big German bratwurst, or two or three. And for that festive touch, it's hard to let go, isn't it? Touch a generous helping of Carl Heinz ketchup. <laughs> it always leaves a yummy taste in your mouth. And when ready, <laughs> when ready, fire. Farce.com to nominate our top chicken cannon target of 2007. Edie wins our latest DVD, Farce Book, and a summons to appear before the next Schreiber inquiry. <laughs> the Chicken Cannon, making Canada a better place, one target at a time. Canadian board game Trivial Pursuit has been sold to Hasbro for $80 million U.S. The toughest question in the all-new American edition, what country is north of the United States? <laughs> a report from the New England Historic Genealogical Society claims Barack Obama is a distant cousin of Brad Pitt. It also says Hillary Clinton is related to Angelina Jolie. And Jack Layton's nephew is Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Saskatchewan's New Democrats found a 16-year-old videotape of Premier Brad Wall and Tory MP Tom Lukiski making comments that are sexist, racist, and homophobic. Lukiski and Wall have apologized for forgetting to be anti-Semitic. <laughs> a new medical website, mydoctor.ca, allows Canadian patients to gain information about their illnesses online. Website users say the service would be more fantastic if you didn't have to wait 72 hours to log on. <laughs> Ontario is cracking down on the payday loan industry, said a government spokesperson. These sleazy companies should not be charging such obscenely high interest rates. That's what credit card companies are for. <laughs> and now to finish off our season with a bang, let's target our top newsmakers. <laughs> Mexican President Felipe Calderon and Canadian Foreign Affairs Minister Maxime Bernier for being too lazy to get off their butts and get Brenda Martin out of prison. Fire! There's a prison bake I can get behind. Next. Prime Minister Harper for refusing to turn up the lights at 24 Sussex Drive during Earth Hour. Let's find a way to turn out the lights. Fire!
works for me. Next, Federal Finance Minister Jim Flaherty for telling Premier Dalton McGuinty his province's tax system has been screwed up from the time Flaherty was Ontario's finance minister. <laughs> <laughs> he got a nice refund. Next, for being able to make so much money in these uncertain economic times, former Beetle Babe Heather Mills. <laughs> and whenever you're ready, fire! <laughs> yes, I guess love can buy you money. And our final target, those great father and son role models who believe any hockey team has a fighting chance, Patrick and Jonathan Roy. Our ammo, a dollop of craft dinner. It's the breakfast of junior hockey players. And don't forget the ketchup. Because Patrick was a superstar with Les Canadiens, Habitant Pissou. It's hockey, so some loose teeth. Mm. One small octopus for that international flavor. so everyone can be black and blue. <laughs> A couple of pucks. And a large bunch of sour grapes because they leave a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> and when ready, <clears throat> fire! so good he can still stop a shot. All right, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing an, uh, an instant replay. How about you? <laughs> and uh, got any other, uh, another instant replay? Do we have the, uh, do we have the big cannon? All right, if we don't, we don't. Oh, it's coming. It's live. What do you expect? <laughs> That's our show for this season. Be sure to check out our website, airparts.com. We'll see you next fall. Have a great summer. Good night.